At the beginning of the 2019 NASCAR season, race fans were treated to the annual clash at Daytona. Maybe not so much of a treat, as it was interrupted multiple times by rain and ultimately was ended by rain. Shortly before the rain hit, drivers were made aware that rain was coming and Jimmy Johnson made a daring pass to move around for the lead, which resulted in the leader actually being spun out, with the entire field being collected as well. After the crash, the rain would settle in and NASCAR would declare Jimmy Johnson to be the winner of this race. However, the car that was most dominant in this race and the guy that got taken out from the lead on what would become the last lap of the race was Paul Menard, driving the ever-historical and well-known 21 car of Wood Brothers Racing. Paul Menard was giving the 21 car one of the best runs that the car has had of him since taking over full-time in 2018, but the fact that he is able to still compete full-time in a 21 is a miracle in and of itself. Now, sadly, in 2019, we did lose Glenn Wood, one of the key owners of the 21 car, but we still have not lost Wood Brothers Racing despite the team being in danger of going under in the late 2000s, and it's all thanks to one Trevor Bain. So, to briefly go into the 21's history in NASCAR, over a span of 1,543 races, the 21 car has seen 81 drivers piloting this car, the best of which being David Pearson. The 21 car has won 92 races, with 43 of these coming from David Pearson. The 21 car has also seen 324 top 5 finishes along with 934 top 10s. This one particular car and team was once one of the very best teams in all of NASCAR. However, over time, things would change. New powerhouse teams would begin to emerge in NASCAR. The cars would change. New drivers would take over. And this would ultimately lead to the Wood Brothers changing to just being kind of a mid-pack kind of team. And they were just getting by in the early 2000s. The 21 team saw one win in 2001 at Bristol Motor Speedway with Elliott Sadler, and while it felt great, the team would go winless for almost exactly 10 more years. Over those 10 years, they'd have Sadler as their driver until the 2003 season, when veteran driver Ricky Rudd would take over full-time until the 2006 season, when Ken Schrader took over to race. Then, in 2007, things began to really change with Wood Brothers. Wood Brothers Racing would no longer compete for a driver's championship, as four drivers would actually compete in the car in 2007, and the team would share resources with a new team of JTG Daughtery Racing. This partnership would continue in 2008 with three drivers sharing the car, but for the first time in the 2000s, the Wood Brothers Racing team was part-time as they only competed in 31 races of the 36 races that season, and it would only get worse thereafter. The team of JTG Daughtery Racing would go on to be their own team in 2009 as they began to run Toyotas. In 2009, Bill Elliott drove the 21 car for only 14 races and David Gilliland drove for one race for a combined 15 races in 2009. Meanwhile, during the same season, Trevor Bain was beginning to catch my attention in a nationwide series racing for Michael Waltrip Racing part-time. Trevor may not have always finished well, but he was usually a good qualifier. He qualified in the top 10 in 10 races of the 15 races he ran in, including getting the pole award at O'Reilly Raceway Park in Indianapolis. Bain would go on to compete for Waltrip for most of 2010, and he got 6 top 5s, 11 top 10s, and 3 pole awards in 2010, but towards the end of the season, Bain would actually switch teams. With 7 races remaining in the 2010 season, he went over to drive for Roush Fenway Racing as he would develop his career here with them. As he transitioned into his new team, part of his new agreement was to race with the Wood Brothers for at least one race at Texas in 2010, where Bill Elliott ran the other 14 races that season. In Trevor's debut race, he was able to finish in 17th place, and it was enough to get him the chance to drive at spring testing at Daytona in 2011, and people could tell immediately that something was very special about that car the 21 team had brought and a the driver they found to drive it. Jeff Gordon even trusted him throughout Speedworks to be his drafting partner, and a plan was for them to work together until a crash would take Gordon out of the 2011 Daytona 500. At this this time, two-car tandem racing was in place and you needed a drafting partner. Bain would have to adapt and towards the end of the race, he was all set to work with Roush Fenway racing partner David Reagan, but with two laps to go on the green-white checkered finish, Reagan was the leader and changed lanes before taking the green flag. Reagan was ultimately black flagged by NASCAR for this and then another caution actually came out, resulting in Trevor Bain being the leader for the restart. He got hooked up with Bobby Labonte and managed to hold on to become the youngest winner of the day 500 at just age 20 and it was a reminder to everyone that Wood Brothers Racing, they're still here. They're not going anywhere. 
the financial gain of winning the 2011 Daytona 500 was surely well needed for the team as some did not know if we would even see the Wood Brothers after Daytona. Trevor Bain would actually compete with the Wood Brothers team for the first eight races of the 2011 Sprint Cup season and would run a total of 17 races that season while also running Roush's nationwide program. Bain would go on to drive part-time with the 21 team up until 2014, running no more than 18 races during this time before going full-time in the six car in 2015. The 21 team would then go on to find a young Ryan Blaney, son of Dave Blaney, a Penske developmental driver, and they ran with him for 17 races in 2015, and Blaney did really great actually. He scored three top 10s, and he qualified in the top 10 seven times that season. This would help lead to a full-on technology partnership between Penske Racing and Wood Brothers Racing, and for the first time since 2007, the Wood Brothers Racing team ran full-time with Ryan Blaney as their driver, and they had a great year in 2016. Ryan Blaney scored three top fives and nine top tens that year, and in 2017, Ryan Blaney got his first career victory at Pocono Raceway driving for the Wood Brothers 21 car. Today, Blaney is now a Team Penske driver driving the number 12 car, but the partnership between Penske and the Wood Brothers is still alive and well, as now veteran driver Paul Menard drives a 21 car with support from Ford and his family's hardware store Menards. The 21 car appears to be here to stay for now, and I believe that Paul Menard does have what it takes to win again in the 21 car in 2019. But all of this even being possible, I give credit back to young Trevor Bain's Daytona 500 victory almost 10 years ago. Now Bain may be seen by many as a one-hit wonder as he has now left NASCAR for now with no team to race for, but I am grateful to say that his one career victory may have just saved one of NASCAR's greatest teams ever. But what do you think? Am I right or am I wrong? Did Trevor Bain save the Wood Brothers 21 car? Drop a comment down below and be sure to hit the like button. If you're new to Danny B Talks, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and click the notification button. That way you never miss another one of my videos. This is Danny B, and thank you so much for watching my new video, and I hope you have a great day. Bye guys.